Hello, and thank you for joining us today. What we're going to be looking at today is Desktop Authority by Script Logic. Desktop Authority is a complete desktop and user management solution that will allow you to manage all of your users and workstations from one single application within your organization. We're going to start off with the first screen you're going to see, which is the system dashboard when you open Desktop Authority. This is going to give us some general product and licensing information. As I move over to the left, we're going to see our navigation pane. And there's a couple areas I'm going to skip past. I'm going to go right down to these profile areas. Some of these areas I'm skipping past is reporting, deployment, and server options. Real briefly, we can report on settings such as hardware and software inventory, and I will show you those reports in a few minutes. The core of the product is under profile management. We have two kinds of profiles, computer management profiles and user management profiles. The difference between the two is computer management profiles, we can manage machines and users without a user being logged into a machine. A user management profile requires the user either to be logging in or logged in. Reason being, we deploy an agent to the workstation. This eliminates the need for any kind of roaming profile. We'll do everything a roaming profile does, plus a whole lot more. But the core part of how desktop authority works is through an area called validation logic. I'll start with an example such as drive mappings. Now, everything on the left here under my workstation default profile can be managed completely independently. In other words, the settings I specify for drive mappings, I don't need to keep the same settings for something like group policies or patch distribution. I can if I want, but you have very fine-grained control over your organization through the use of validation logic. So what is validation logic? Well, essentially, it's Boolean logic we're going to apply to determine how we deploy our settings with desktop authority. I take something like a J drive. You know what? I'll go with a P drive because that's my personal drive to all of my users. I choose my drive letter. I choose my path. It's just a server share. I'm using the percent username percent variable so everyone gets their share drive mapped to their actual username and active directory. I have some drive options, an explorer label I can specify for the drive, and some options if the drive fails to map. Now, validation logic determines who's going to get these drives. What I'm saying is, Anyone in the domain, Acme, deploy their home drive. Now, I can granularize this a little more. I have five core areas, starting with network membership. Maybe I want to deploy this drive only to a specific OU. I can browse Active Directory and look for my OUs in my domain and deploy this drive to any of these OUs or child OUs. I can deploy this drive to a specific site. I can deploy this drive to a particular user group or user name. And again, all I'm doing is browsing Active Directory. So there's no need to import any kind of text file or CSV or anything like that. We're browsing your live AD infrastructure. I can deploy this drive to a specific computer information type, such as computer name. I can go ahead and choose specific machines in my organization. Now you can control click everywhere in here. So if I want to deploy this, in addition to users in the domain, I could say to these machines also. I could deploy based on a specific IP address or an entire subnet. I could deploy to an IP range, 168 to 172 or something like that. It's really up to you how far you want to go with this. Now, you can combine all these options I'm showing you also. You're not just restricted to one. I could deploy based, deploy based on terminal server configuration, custom validation, and specific timing and events, in other words, frequency and time range. This is something you probably wouldn't use for a drive mapping, but maybe for Windows updates, maybe for an application deployment, maybe for a service pack, and those are all things we could do within Desktop Authority. Let's go ahead and create a drive from scratch. I'll show you how easy this is. I right-click, create a new element, I give it a name. I'm just going to call it S drive. I choose my settings, give it the letter S. I choose my path. I can either browse or I can manually type in a UNC path. Now I'm going to determine who's going to get this drive based on validation logic. So I'm going to choose my network membership. I'll say if the user group is, and let's go ahead and look for our, glo our global groups here. I'll say any kind of help desk employee, human resources, finance or facilities. I'll say OK. I'll add some more criteria here also. I'll say if the user is in a particular site, and here we can choose our sites. And I'll go ahead and add more criteria here. I'll say specific computer information. Let's say when they're in, in a particular subnet. 
and I'll just use an asterisk here for the last octet, so that would include the entire 192.168.1 subnet. And now maybe I have a specific user that's a manager of a department, and he or she gets elevated privileges with elevated drives, and they don't need this drive. I can go ahead and browse for a user from my users in the domain, and I'll just take a Baldwin, and I'll say not. So I'll exclude that user, even though he's our HR director, and HR gets this drive. The second area for validation logic is on the right. I could deploy based on machine class. Do I want to deploy this drive to desktop, servers, embedded, etc.? Well, I'm going to uncheck my DCs. I'm going to uncheck member servers. Maybe I don't have any embedded machines. Maybe I'm not running tablet machines. I don't want to deploy a personal drive to any kind of domain controller or server operating system. I can deploy either local or for remote users or both. And I'm going to deploy this drive at log on. Now all I need to do is save my changes and replicate them across my script logic, ser script logic servers and or domain controllers, depending on how our implementation is set up. So that's the overview of validation logic. Let me show you some other areas that would benefit from deploying desktop authority. We have USB port security. What we're going to do here is essentially lock down your USB ports. This is going to install as a service on your workstations. Now the nice part is, we can lock down your USB ports based on device type plugged in. In other words, it's not an all or nothing solution. You can lock down ports, let's say, only for devices that read. So if we want to lock down for floppy disks, zip drives, MP3 players, you can see some options here. I can allow read, I can allow write, I can allow full control, or I can explicitly deny full control to a device based on the device type. The way we're determining type is simply by the way the manufacturer of the device codes it. Anything that's not coded is going to be unclassified. We can also lock down Wi-Fi devices. I can specify this lockdown for specific users in my organization. So I have one here called Lockdown. It's much more restrictive. I've added a handful of users to the Lockdown USB permission set. You can see here I've locked down everything. I've disabled all access with the exception of the human interface, the mouse and keyboard. We're going to log any information that's sent over a USB device. I can add optional device exceptions. Maybe I always want to allow iPhones. I can specify by vendor ID, product ID, and serial number. I can specify an administrative override to a USB device simply by typing in a password. And validation logic, who's going to get this service installed? Another area we have here is shortcuts. Okay, this is simply stated an application shortcut to the user's desktop. What we're going to do is create a shortcut to a backend application. I'm saying create my shortcut. I give a shortcut name, location, target, any kind of arguments. I choose my start and directory. Right here, I'm saying my Tiger Shark program files, Twizzlers. That's where it's going to start in the workstation. My icon. So I'm browsing for a path for a specific icon for that shortcut. How I want the application to run. And essentially, who's going to get this application. So I'm deploying it. I'm deploying this application to IT or Angelina Jolie or Nick Nolte based on this machine class, specific OSs, etc. Scrolling up a little bit, I want to talk about my actual computer management profiles. So here, I'm going to deploy a specific application, regardless of whether a user is logged in or logged off of the machine. I'm going to deploy Office 2007 or 2010 using the Microsoft OCT. I specify the server, the share, and the actual location of the file. I'm going to run this application, the install this application as the administrator with elevator privileges, so it doesn't matter if the local user is not a member of the administrator's group on that machine. I have some execution options, some text that will pop up. I can ask the user's permission, authorized by. I have some reboot options. Do I want to reboot after this application gets installed? And then when am I going to install, install this application? I want to time this. I'm going to say install once at 6 a.m., and I choose my date, any date and time. Again, validation logic determines who gets this install. Windows patching. We can fully patch all of your Windows boxes. This includes your servers, not just workstations. We're also going to patch third-party party products, so we're not only uh, restricted to Microsoft patches. So here I'm choosing my severity filters. I'll say critical patches. I choose my product filters. So essentially, what do you want to patch? I can choose specific operating systems or specific products. So I'm going to say patch my Windows 7 Ultimate Machines and Professional 64 and 32-bit. Next, I choose my patch type filter. I'm going to say security only. I search for my patches. Here they are on my database. I'm going to deploy based on individual patch. I say I want this patch, that patch, and that patch. I'm going to choose my deployment server that these patches are, start, are stored on. I'm going to choose to install or roll back existing patches. I have some execution options on the client machine, just as we saw within the application launcher. I choose my timing, and then my validation logic, who's going to get these patches. 
we can also perform wake on land remote deployment. So I'm gonna, before I deploy my patches, I want to make sure my remote computers are powered on. So obviously, a wake on land would need to be enabled in the BIOS. A network cable needs to be plugged in the machine, and a power cable needs to be plugged into the machine that I want to wake. I choose what machines I want to wake based on machine name, MAC address, IP address, and I can exclude MAC addresses. Now, wake on land always resolves based on MAC address, so whatever you enter needs to be valid. My timing, I'm going to schedule this deployment. I'm saying 12 a.m. on the second Tuesday, and I can say every month of the year here, and then I'm going to go ahead and deploy my patches. So now let's take a look at some of the actual reporting we can perform with Desktop Authority. All these reports are included and out of the box. I have not modified anything here. One of the popular reports is a hardware inventory. I'm running VMware, so I'm going to run my detail with virtual machines. I'm going to run it against all my workstations. I have a single workstation here. We can see all the hardware in my machine. I can see the computer type is a workstation, the model number, the asset tag, the OS, BIOS information, memory information, memory per slot, processor. As I scroll down here, you'll kind of see for yourself all the information we're, pull we're pulling, IP version 4 and IP version 6 information. I can export these reports and any report with desktop authority into the following formats. I can schedule all these reports, so there's no need to come in here and manually run any of these reports. They could be scheduled and sent out to whomever you want. They can also be downloaded to a file share. The last area I want to touch on is remote management within Desktop Authority. So we have complete remote management. Now what I could do here is remote via a, a, a web browser. I'm going to go ahead and log into my remote machine using my existing credentials. And you can see here that I'm connected to my remote machine named WKS7. I see some general information about that machine, such as access, current connections, basic system information. I can go ahead and take remote control of this machine. And you can see here, we're waiting for the authorization from the existing logged on user. So that user has to say, yes, we can connect, or no, you cannot. Now, that's optional. You can set this however you want. You can go in regardless. You can require some users to allow the connection, particularly when you're connecting to a C-level executive or an HR person with uh, sensitive information. I can perform a file transfer from my machine to that remote machine or vice versa. I can open up a remote help desk chat window. I can look at that com the computer information of that remote machine. So everything I would look at under Computer Manager, I can now see within Desktop Authority simply by remote connecting. I can look at performance information. So how is this machine running? I could see any installed software in that machine. This is another report we can run, but if you need to see this on the fly, that's fine. We can do that for you. Okay, so that is Desktop Authority in a nutshell. Complete desktop management solution that's going to allow you to manage all of your workstations from a single console. Thank you for joining us today.